Welcome to what is D-Day in Group 5 of the Championship League of 2018. Yes, we've had one day of competition already, jockeying for positions as always on day one. But now it's the, the nitty-gritty, the crunch time of this group. And everyone is basically still OK. We know that Judd Trump is in the semi-finals for sure because he's won four matches out of four. Apart from that, everything else is still wide open. And these two, David Gilbert on the left, Martin Gould on the right, could really do with a victory. Dave, have a good match. The referee is Rob Spencer. As always, it's a race to three. Have a good match. The best of five. Martin, you're breaking, aren't you? Dave, Martin. Martin. Sorry, <laughs> Alicia King. Dave Gilbert a little bit overzealous to, to break off. First frame. Martin Gould to break. The break off actually is Martin Gould. And Gould hoping for the same kind of start that he made to yesterday's proceedings. He beat Ricky Walden 3 1 in the first match funnily enough here on table one after that though it wasn't so good for Gould he was beaten 3-1 by Judd Trump and then 3-1 by Mark Williams so with one win out of three his position is somewhat precarious so what about Dave Gilbert well he started with a 3-1 win over Joe Perry but then lost 3-0 to Trump and in the last match to finish last night he was beaten 3-1 by Ben Wollaston so he's in exactly the same position as Gould played 3-1-1 lost 2 You know the old mantra, whatever you do, don't hit the blue. That's what Gilbert did, but it could have been a whole lot worse. By the way, two matches simultaneously being played at the moment. Over on table two, our other stream, Michael McMullen is commentating on Ricky Walden against Joe Perry. Very well cued from Dave Gilbert there. That's a, a confidence booster. Confirmation that you're cueing well. Not much to choose between these two in terms of their world ranking. Gould is the world number 20. Gilbert is 24th on the list. Dave Gilbert's three. And that was unbecoming of his ranking. He did poorly. Well, not a bad white, but the red is on. Wow. 
one. I was saying not a, an awful lot between them in terms of world rankings and nothing between them in terms of previous meetings. The head-to-head -head series is three wins apiece. Well, after this, it has to get into the bunch. So, looking for a good angle here. 30. Needs to travel, needs to travel. As soon as he made contact, he knew there was not enough juice in the cue ball. Could be saved, though, if the plant is on. There is distance between the two reds he's looking at. Well, that's one of the best shots of the group so far. That was absolutely terrific. Right on the nose, just where he wanted to break them up. The split he deserved. Absolutely perfect. What a tremendous shot that was. Nancy. can't tell you just how good that developing shot was off the brown to go into the bunch like that scatter them as he did 26 simply superb The red is going to pot to the middle on the pink spot, so the pink being replaced on the black spot. 33. After this, though, the pink will go where it should be. And there's absolutely no reason to believe that Gould can't go on and win this frame in this single visit. 40. Forty-seven. 
48. All very neat and tidy so far. No alarms whatsoever. And it was all to do with that 62. two cushion split of the pack off the brown. 63. Well, that was frame ball. The break now, 63. Gould's lead, 60. Only 59 on the table. Can he go on to make what would be the 10th century already of this group? 71. But it would be his first... Well, yesterday morning, in the very first frame, Gould sat out a 140 break from Ricky Walden. This time the boot is very much on the other foot. He's the one monopolising table time. Thought for a moment he might get a full ball kiss there and knock the red towards the cushion into an unpotable position, but he's okay. The century is still on. What a simply excellent contribution this has been. Fully deserving of a century. And there it is. As I said before, the 10th century already in Group 5. And if you're interested, that's the 55th century in the Championship League this season. Mattingill, Unable to pop the yellow from distance, but the damage had been well and truly done. What a start of the day from Martin Gould. A couple of superb shots, none better than the Brown to open the Reds. A break of 101, and just like that, Gould wins the opening frame. He leads David Gilbert by one frame to zero. I can tell you, much slower going in the opening frame on the other table. Joe Perry's taking on Ricky Walden. Walden's at the table scoring healthily. But we're still some way from a verdict there, as you can see. Walden on a break of 47. His lead is 45. But having missed that black, 
suddenly the frame is open again. Alden, yesterday, lost against Gould 3-1. He then lost to Mark Williams 3-1. But he salvaged something, something last night with a 3-2 win over Ben Wollaston in a really good contest. Wollaston actually made two centuries, but couldn't quite get the verdict. So Walden really in the same boat as the two players we're watching on table one. He has a victory under his belt, and he badly needs another. We'll keep you up to date with what Second happens there. Over. Now, though, it's back to the second frame. Gilbert looking to equalise against Gould. And you can't wish for anything better than that. Gilbert, Gilbert yeah. took a couple of steps towards the table, but he was always going to have that cue ball replaced. Awesome. Quite a complex escape, this. One, two, three, four cushions used. Oh, and judged a treat. Pretty good. Snookered on all 15 reds. Now has he left a red to middle? A little loose that one. Playing it that way, almost certainly he was going to leave this. OK, Gould couldn't do an awful lot with the white, but where he is on the blue, he's greatly helped by the fact that the green is off its spot. So should float this one in and out of bulk without any problems whatsoever. Needs the white to stop. Or to kiss like that. Six. Really fortunate. Six. 
Seven. Well, <clears throat> touching ball. Well, touching ball so he can take the cue ball away from the Reds, but that's just a very small consolation prize. Wanted to make more than 12 from that. Well, he could pot the red. Very close to the white, wasn't it? Hard to judge the angle. He judged it really well and for the second time in the break he's had a really good kiss because he's not only on the green but he's got the angle on the green to come down for the reds so i thought the break was over it wasn't one thing i do know for sure is that ricky walden has taken a one nil lead over joe perry Seventeen. Earlier this season, Martin Gould was reminded of Dave Gilbert's scoring power when they met in the World Open in Yushan in China. Last 32, Gould won the match 5-2. In so doing, he made a couple of 73 breaks and a run of 130. 24. Here, though, so far, it's Gould doing all the scoring. Twenty-five. These two have had a couple of epic battles in the World Championship. In 2009, in the last 64, it was Gould who prevailed 10-8. And it was ex exactly the same score when they met three years later in the World Championship, although this time it wasn't in the qualifying competition. It was in the crucible itself in the first round. And on that occasion, it was Gilbert who prevailed 10-8. Thank you. Thirty eight. Well, he didn't play that, but for the third time in the break, he's had a good kiss. During his break of 101 in the opener, Gould's position was absolutely spot on. Here, he's been a little fortunate. Yeah. 
two. He'll pop this red and no doubt use the one to its immediate right-hand side to hold for position. Now that was nicely struck, well held off the black for the red. 54. And 2-0 is beginning to seriously loom. 55. Especially as you can see on the previous shot there with the, the three reds in a line that will all pot into this top left hand pocket. 63. So with this black, the break would go to 70. Gould's lead would go to 66. So just this very elementary red required to leave Gilbert requiring snookers. 69. So now as Gould drops his chalk, we're just wondering whether we're going to see back-to-back -back centuries. Absolutely no reason why not. Well, as they say, Gould has gone out of bed on the right side this morning. Eighty five. Ninety two. So the last red across the top cushion for another turn. Five. Sorry, ninety-nine. Rob Spence is giving in the century already, adding the six points on twice. <laughs> One hundred. Well done, Martin Gould, to make a century in any competition against anyone, any time is an achievement. To make them back to back, you've got to be seriously good. The in-off will not concern Gould in the slightest and neither should it. So 101 break in the first frame, 
106 in the second. OK, he was assisted early on by a couple of slices of positional good fortune. But nevertheless, excellent stuff from Gould, who very stylishly has taken a 2-0 lead over Dave Gilbert. Back-to-back -back breaks of 100 or more. Across this Rico Arena auditorium, I can tell you that Joe Perry looks good to draw level with Ricky Walden. The pink takes his break to 37. His lead is now 57, and so I think we're going to be able to see what is frame ball here, this red coming up. Frame two there, over by the shouting, you would completely assume. So it looks as though Perry is going to equalise. As for Martin Gould, well, he's a man in inspired form. Two frames, two centuries, 2-0 two ahead. Third frame. Looking for the whitewash as he breaks off here in the third. And of course, if he does get the victory, with two wins, he's getting close to the situation where, at the very least, he might well finish fifth in the group. And therefore, at worst, he'll be back for group six here tomorrow. Not mathematically guaranteed to finish fifth if you have two wins, by the way, as several players over the years have discovered. Gould is involved, actually, in the last match of the round-robin phase in this group here on table one, much later on this afternoon, against Ben Wollaston. First things first, though, he wants to wrap up the win here. Can confirm, by the way, not that you would be at all surprised. Perry and Walden are one frame each. Well, Gould did not want to hit the jaws of the middle pocket, but hitting the near jaw, in that instance, infinitely preferable to hitting the far jaw. Okay, it was a pretty direct in off, but really from there you can't say that a player could have foreseen that. Yes, he knew the, the cue ball was going in the general vicinity of the, the middle pocket, but that was still unlucky. You have to say it's 
harsh if you don't. Well, he missed the red by an absolute mile, did Martin Gould. And what a fluke that is. Reminiscent of the fluke to the same pocket that Ben Wollaston had, from which he made a 101 break yesterday to beat Mark Williams 3-1. Gould would love something similar here. Look at this. Nowhere near the red. But that one flies in without touching the sides. And the former German Masters champion is off and running again. Now, with the, the black in such a congested area of the table, this break is a lot more complex than the previous two, but nevertheless, it's a chance to build a subs substantial lead. Six. The red will go past the pink, past the green, into the ball pocket here. But that's wide, always wide. Undercut. Martin Gold 12. Well, how did the yellow not go in? Considering what's happened to Gilbert so far in the frame, I'm glad it didn't really, because that would have been really cruel. Well, he played the double undoubtedly with a degree of safety in mind. And where the yellow was, I think that shot made a lot of sense. He was guaranteed some kind of position Three. on the yellow, but no position here is going to have to knock in a really good one. Three. The body language, I'm not saying it's negative, but it, there's a certain element of resignation there for me. One. 
我。It was an unusual day at the snooker yesterday. Twelve matches completed. We saw a couple of 3-0 results, both in favour of Judd Trump, actually. We saw one match go to the wire. Ricky Walden beat Ben Wollaston 3-2. But the other nine matches all resulted in 3-1 victories. So whitewashers have been in short supply, but we could be about to witness one here. So much indicates that's going to be the case. Although, not that shot. Gould well short of where he wanted to be. At least six inches. Well recovered from Martin Gould, both in terms of the pot and position, although he's on the incorrect side of the blue. And because the blue and the pink are so close together, you might have heard Rob Spencer, the referee there, say, please declare which colour you're going for here, because clearly it's not pink ball, obvious. He's taking on the pink because that gives him more angle to go in and out of bulk. Well, it's a 30-point lead for Gould and having to cut his losses. Martin Gould, 17. 2 nil in front. 30 in front. Doesn't have to take any unnecessary risk. Well, finally, Dave Gilbert, the gentleman there, apologises for the fluke, but he's had some rum old luck in this match against him. So I suppose that's the the balancing of the scales to a degree. And anyway, this game, while luck does play a part, it's even more important what you actually do with luck if you take advantage of it. Now, Gould did in the second frame. A few favourable positional rubs were turned into a century. Six. Dave Gilbert, six. Gilbert has got to tell himself things can turn around. For him to win three consecutive frames against anyone, very much a possibility. And if he could win this match, who knows? Good things might be around the corner.
just look at what happened to Ali Carter in Group 4. Day 1, dispirited. Lost 3 out of 3. But then the following day, he came back and won both of his matches. Qualified for the playoffs and then in the semi-final and final against Judd Trump and then Sean Murphy, Carter played absolutely tremendous snooker and won the group. You might be wondering, by the way, who is in our winners group so far? Well, Carter is the, the group four winner. Kyron Wilson, recent Masters runner-up, he's the group three winner. Group two was won by Mark Selby, the world champion and runaway world number one. And group one was won by a young man who today is celebrating a milestone birthday, Zhu Yulong. No longer can we refer to him as a teenager. Today's his 20th birthday. Twentieth birthday. Ooh, I remember mine thirty five years ago. When I was twenty, Margaret Thatcher was in power. Alex Higgins had just won his second world championship. And the Open Golf Champion was Tom Watson. Other things occurred in 1982, of course, but they were the things that mattered most to me. Now the position of the green here is manna from heaven for Martin Gould. Six reds left. Gilbert couldn't see any of them directly. That's a pretty good safety from Gould. He would have liked to have hit the red just an absolute fraction thinner. But all things considered, where he was playing from, that was a really good shot. Not so from Gilbert. Now this kind of pot is really in Martin Gould's wheelhouse. When he's playing well, he knocks so many of these in. Whoa. And after that, bear in mind he was already 24 points to the good. This might be the finishing touch. Eight. 
No. For a moment there, Gould was concerned he wasn't on the black, but he's OK. And you would assume if he pots the black here and gets good position, it's pretty close to curtains. Well, he did one, but not the other. Didn't quite get into the cue ball as he wanted to. The red is still on, but this is 16. very missable. So Gould's lead goes to 41 points. He needs a colour and one more red. Frame and match ball coming up then. Twenty-three. No mistake. What a start to the day for Martin Gould. Couldn't have wished for anything better. I can tell you on the other table, Ricky Walden has just taken a 2-1 lead over Joe Perry. Here, on table one, the handshake is imminent. 29. Well, Merlin the Magician wouldn't pot there, surely. Martin Gould, 35. Not that it matters. Martin Gould with a dominant performance there. Dave Gilbert's hardly got a look in. The crux of the matter was that Gould started off with a couple of centuries, 101 and 106. He wins by three frames to nil. And with two wins under his belt now, that's a significant move towards a place in the playoffs here later on. So next up here on table one, I can tell you that Dave Gilbert must pull himself up by his bootstraps because he's in action again this time against a double world champion and former world number one Mark Williams